Every sports fan can agree that there are some weird things that happen in their sports, whether it's hitting a bird on a pitch for baseball, or an amazing one-handed catch that was not supposed to happen in football. We see some weird things happen, but then there are those stats and those things in history that were just so weird that you don't really hear about it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today for the NHL. The five weirdest things, weirdest stats that happened in NHL history. Starting off at number five, in 1934 there was no sudden death over time. So in January 16th of 1934, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Ottawa Senators went to overtime. It wasn't sudden death, so you could score as many goals in the 10 minute overtime as you wanted to. Well, Toronto Maple Leafs player Ken Doherty made history by scoring a hat trick in those 10 extra minutes. This does not mean that he scored one goal and finished off a hat trick. This means that Doherty scored three goals all in overtime. This is not a stat we'll ever see again as we now have sudden death overtime. This is a stat that I think is probably one of the most insane stats that you could ever look up, especially if you're a fan that does not know about the history of the league much, and you don't know how overtime's worked before, you'll look at it and be like, huh, that doesn't sound possible, that sounds fake. But believe me, it's not. Coming up at number four is the story of Lester Patrick. So we all know the story of David Ayers that happened in the 2019-20 season when he was put in as an emergency backup goaltender for the Carolina Hurricanes. He was a Toronto Maple Leaf Zamboni driver and practice goalie at the time, and he played against his own team in a technical sense, and he won the game. 42 years old, um, oldest goaltender to ever win a game, I believe. So it's quite the it's quite remarkable to see that happen, especially as an emergency backup goaltender. Well. In April of 1928, in the Rangers' second season, they were facing the Montreal Maroons in the Stanley Cup Finals. Game one, their goaltender was um, fine. He played really well, um, but he lost the game. Um, it was a 2-0 victory for Montreal. It wasn't much that could be done because Montreal was very good at the time. Well, Lauren Shabbat, the Rangers goalie, in the second period got hit in the eye with a puck. He was forced out of action. During this time, there were no backup goaltenders in the NHL. It was just the one goaltender. They tried to get approval for multiple different players to take over for that position at net because they needed a goalie to continue the game. After, um, after some time with just not getting permission from Montreal's manager um, to get some people in, um, Lester Patrick decided, you know what? I was a defender back in the 1900s and 1910s. Why don't I go in? Now you're probably thinking, that's a defender. How can he play goalie? When we look up, when we look back at the way that backup goal or not backup goalies. When we look at when we look back at the way goalies played back during that time, we see a lot of standing up, um, falling down, obviously, but it was a lot less harsh on the legs for a goaltender to play so it wasn't as difficult on your body so a 44 year old being able to play after never playing goalie before i mean it's it's remarkable what's even more remarkable is that he won the game he won the game for the new york rangers and if i'm correct they won the cup that year as well an amazing performance by Lester Patrick, the general manager and head coach of the New York Rangers. This is not something we will ever see again. Um, if we ever do, it'll be remarkable because when we think of general managers, we think of older general managers like um, Stevie Eiserman or Lou Lamorello, and not the young ones like Kyle, Dub Kyle Dubas or um, any anybody else. We think of the older ones, even the younger ones wouldn't be able to do this though. It's just insane that a general manager and coach was able to take over for a starting goaltender's position. Alfie Moore, a name that nobody knows because I didn't even hear this story and I've been watching hockey for over a decade. This guy won a Stanley Cup final game for the Chicago Blackhawks in 1937-38 season while drunk. So. 
How did he get to this point? Well, the Chicago Blackhawks starting goaltender Mike Karakis broke his toe in the semifinals and was not able to play to begin the Stanley Cup Finals. This was a concern because at the time, the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, who they were playing in the Stanley Cup Finals, their general manager, Con Smythe, was not letting them get a goalie. Um, you, you had to request to get a goalie from a certain team before a game just so a game can happen. Con Smythe kept declining, and the Chicago Blackhawks were struggling. But they finally found a farmhand named Alfie Moore in a pub in Toronto. This was hours before the game. Moore was drunk, very drunk and they signed him to a contract. Now, Moore did let in the first shot on goal, but did not let any more in after that. The Chicago Blackhawks beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 3-1 to and eventually won the cup, and it all started with that one game by Alfie Moore. Absolutely outstanding performance by a goaltender who was um, quite a few drinks in. Um, now, that was the only game that he played. They tried to bring in Paul Goodman, a minor leaguer. Um, Alfie Moore was also in the minor leagues, but not as uh, he was not supposed to be playing at that time. Um, but Paul Goodman, they tried bringing him up. Um, he was another AHL player. Did not work out well. They lost 5-1. to one. And then Karakis actually came back because the, um, because the trainer made a special boot to protect his toe that he broke. So he led them to the Stanley Cup, but it all started with Alfie Moore's Game 1 win. And this is, again, another thing that we will never see again. Because if we see a goaltender like Frederick Anderson, Ilya Sorokin, um, Igor Shesterkin, if they come in drunk, they're not playing. You don't just pick up a drunk guy off the street and (laughs) sign him to a contract. So this is a story that we will never see again. At number two, this one is a mix of really weird and also really sad. So in 2011, um, this player won the cup, thankfully, so it's not as sad of a story. Nathan Horton. Not many people know his name. He did play a pretty good career, though. Um, From what I'm seeing, he had 200 goals and 400 points um, in nine nine seasons. A reliable player, um, great, great looks there. And he was also a third round pick in, uh, not third round, sorry, a first round third overall pick in 2003 for the Florida Panthers. He didn't stay on the Panthers. Um, he was there for six seasons. He he was a very solid player. Um, the injuries that he got really ruined his career. For a player as promising as this guy, it's really sad to see somebody's career just go down like that. He was pretty young when he had to retire because he first played the 2003-2004 season, meaning he started playing at 18-19. In just nine seasons, he was 27-28. A very short career for a player that not only has one of the weird stats, but also had a, a very successful career until that injury. So... On March 10th, 2014, the Columbus Blue Jackets and Dallas Stars face off against each other. A lot of you will know this date because it is the date where Rich Peverly of the Stars collapsed on the bench. Um, He had an irregular heartbeat. If I'm correct, he was temporarily, um, he did temporarily pass away, which happens with a regular heartbeat. But he came back um, and he retired. He is safe. He is all good now. But the game was postponed because of this, and earlier in that game, just four minutes before Peverly um, passed out, Horton got a goal. He opened up scoring, made it 1-0, and they decided after the incident happened, people were all shaken up. They said that the game would be postponed to a later date. That date was April 9, 2014. Well... Just the game before, Horton was playing against the Phoenix Coyotes. He only played five minutes. He got injured, and this would be the last game of his career, as this um, just aggravated a back injury. It caused a back injury, it was degenerative, and he was not able to play again. That was the final game of his career. But on April 9th, because 
um, Horton scored in that first game uh, with the Dallas Stars on March 10th, the goal stayed on in the next game. So it counted as a goal for Horton on April 9th, not March 10th. So after not playing any more games, his last game was April 8th, 2014. Technically retired at that time. Um, no shots on net. On April 9th, he scored a goal. Even though he, that he wasn't playing anymore, he scored a goal. If I'm correct, that's the only time we've seen that. It is such a weird stat. And it's all unfortunate because his career was cut short. But it's still a very odd stat to look at because he wasn't playing anymore and he counted as a goal. Anybody who looks at that is probably like, huh, that's odd. And you go onto his NHL page, it doesn't show the previous games for him, unfortunately, but he is really, it, it's such an interesting thing. Um, not well known, but I have heard of it before this, before I looked up all these different stats, and it's just such an interesting thing. It's not something we're going to see again anytime soon. It's possible if something like this does happen again, but I doubt it happens in the next 50 years. And so, Horn's not the only player to score without getting a shot on net. It happened with Eric Stahl and Matt Coolen uh, most recently, so, you know, it's still a unique stat, but scoring after being retired, that is the stat that is extremely unique. And at number one, this is my favorite thing ever. So, people probably know the name Tom Clancy or King Clancy. He was a, um, or sorry, not, not Tom Clancy, sorry, Frank Clancy, also known as King Clancy. Clancy was a five foot seven defenseman at 155 pounds. It, the size was weird at that time because when you think of hockey players back in that time, back in the um, 30s, 20s and 30s, you think of, well, these players had to be big. They had to be physical, right? Because hockey is a very physical game. Uh, Clancy kind of broke those barriers. He played a very good game. He, he had a very successful career and made it to the Hall of Fame. But the most interesting thing about his career is that in one game, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, March 31st, 1923, King Clancy not only played defense, but he also played forward. And I think I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, he played goaltender. And not only that, it wasn't just one part of the ice for each position. He played right D, left D, right wing, center, left wing, and goaltender. All six positions in one game. He's the only player that I know of in Stanley Cup, or not Stanley Cup, but NHL history to do that. Six positions during one game. That's not something you see very often. So seeing that is outstanding. I didn't think it was possible. I looked it up as a joke a few years ago. And he came up. I never thought that would happen before. Now, I've seen posts on Reddit where people say, Oh, I've, I've done this before. Okay, but you're also playing like street hockey, recreational hockey. You're not playing the NHL against really good players. And you're not doing it in the playoffs. For those wondering why he played goaltender, he only played it for two minutes. Um, Clint Benedict was the goaltender at the time for the Ottawa Senators. And... Um, at that time, goalies served their own penalties. They went to the box. They needed a goaltender. Clancy went in, and he stopped all shots on goal during that two-minute power play, so uh, or two-minute penalty kill. So it's very interesting. Um, I, I really like looking at this. I think it is so cool just looking at the stats from this guy. I mean, he was a great player during his time. Um, there was there were people who said that he would start a thousand fights and never won a fight because he was so small. Um, he broke a lot of barriers. Just a great player in general. But seeing that he played all six um, positions is just 
so so inspiring to a lot of people for one and it's also just really interesting to look at so which stat do you guys think is the weirdest um let me know down in the comments make sure to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about some more weird stats or just want more videos talking about history of the nhl i really want to know what you guys want to see i'm really hoping that this channel grows the way that i want it to because i'm also very interested in doing this for um a living so yeah Thank you guys so much um, for watching if you watched this all the way. Um, again, make sure to like, subscribe. It would honestly mean the world to me. And I will see you guys later.